In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23, Paul is speaking to the church at Thessalonica and he said, And may your spirit, soul, and body be preserved, sound, and complete, and found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I want you to say with me, I am a spirit being. I have a soul. I live in a body. But I am a, speak, a speaking spirit. I'm a spirit being. So the real you is a spirit. Amen. Now I may be saying some things that you've heard before, uh, but it's important because there's something here this morning that I want you to get that a number of you in here may not have gotten hold of. If, if, that's, if, if, if that weren't true, then you wouldn't have me say this. But I know you need to hear it. So you, you may be saying, well, Pastor, I've, I've heard all this before, and I want to say something about it. Somebody said that to me oh, some time back. You don't come in here for me to tickle your ears uh, with some kind of new and dynamic revelation. Although, this morning, this may be a new and dynamic revelation to some of you. But you come, what you do is you, you come in here uh, to get the word for the moment. Amen? And the word for the moment could be possibly the same word you heard last week. And the reason he has it repeated again is because he's waiting for you to do what you heard last week. So this is the marching orders of the day. It may be new, it may be old. But it's always fresh and it's always exactly what God wants you to hear right here, right now, in this session. Are we good? Yes. So say, I am a speaking spirit. I am a speaking spirit. So, from what you just said, when I talk about you today, I want you to keep in mind, right in the front of your mind, that I'm talking about your spirit. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking about your spirit. He's talking about your spirit. Okay. So he's talking about my spirit. Talk about my spirit. Keep it right out, right out on the front of everything that you hear so that you'll hear it right. You are perfect. You are flawless. You are just like God. Yes. And I know I got across the aisle there. I don't know. No. You're, I'm going to correct that. You're going you're gonna to find out something about that. Many of you go around all concerned about whether you're going to go to heaven. I mean, Christians, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to go to heaven. I think I'm going to go to heaven, but this and but that. But as a born-again believer, you're a perfect creation of God. Amen. You're created just like Him. You're seated with God. It tells us that. So realizing that, why are you questioning your own self whether you're going to go to heaven and be with God. Well, I know because the devil comes in and tries to convince you otherwise. See, you're already filled with a Godhead. Everybody in here born again? Yes. So you're already filled with the Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. It tells us that in Colossians uh, 2.10. See, heaven is already in you. Amen. Talking about changing some ways that you think. And, and the reason some of you don't believe that is that you're looking at your sinning. Your behavior instead of acknowledging your identity. So you don't identify yourself by your behavior. You identify yourself by your identity. And so I want you to know heaven's taken care of. In fact, I entitled this this morning, uh, Definitely Heaven Bound. Look at your neighbor and say, you're definitely heaven bound. See, if you're born again, you're definitely heaven bound. In fact, I'll tell you this. The Bible tells us in uh, Psalm 139, I think it's about ver verse 16, that every person that is created by God, that's every human being, from the beginning of time all the way as far as our time will go, has his name, her name, in the book of life in heaven. Thank you for those one and a half amens. What do you mean, Pastor Mike? Because see, a lot of Christians say, well, I, I, I just got to do this and I got to do that and I, I, I've got to be this and I got to be that because I don't want my name taken out of the book of life. 
They've read over there in Revelation where names will be taken out of the book of life. The only names that will be taken out of the book of life are the names that were out of all creation never accepted Jesus. Never accepted that Messiah. Never accepted that coming Messiah. Every name, every, every name that is named, every person that is ever created, every, every person that's born, ever has been born, the first thing that happens before they're ever born is their name is put in the book. Hallelujah. And the only way the name is taken out of the book is if you don't receive Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now I'm not giving you a license to sin. Christians do that without a license. But listen to me closely. Again, say, I'm a spirit. I am a spirit. He's talking about my spirit. I'm talking about my spirit. Okay. But when you always measure your spirituality and qualification for heaven by your daily behavior, you're letting what you do define who you are. And that's just not true. Colossians 1.12 uh, tells us, uh, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us. Amen. Look at your name and say you're qualified. And he's made us fit, which means he supplied us with everything that we need to be qualified. It is all found in the book. To share the portion, which is the inheritance of the saints, God's holy people in life. Say, I'm holy. A lot of Christians won't say that. Oh, I couldn't say I'm holy. You don't know what I did last night. I can't be. No, we're not talking about your behavior. We're talking about what God has said about you. Amen. Amen. He says God's holy people, the saints. You're a saint. Saints are not people that are just put on pedestals in some churches up high, you know, and then, you know, somebody lives his life 105 years or something, and all of a sudden now because of his life and what he did, he qualifies as a saint. And they have little buttons that you can get saint this and saint that and saint this and if, if you get this saint you're safe if you get this saint you get rich if you get this saint no 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 that's all religion it's all garbage that's French for uh, garbage in the south if you want to wear one of those that's wonderful if Michael was born again Saint Michael is a saint but so are you Amen. if you're born again you're just as saint as he is you're just as holy as he is. You're just as righteous as he is. Amen. Amen. Take this in. You don't hear it in many churches. Some religiously quote Jesus under that old covenant and say, but pastor, our redemption draweth nigh. We're still being saved. No, we're not. He was talking about the coming of salvation through the cross. That was before the cross. When he said, your redemption draweth nigh. And he was right. He was drawing nigh just in a few days. He was going to get it for you. Verse 13 and 14 of Colossians 1 says, the Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of the Son of his love in whom we have our redemption. Say with me, I have my redemption. I am the redeemed of the Lord. I have been purchased with precious blood. He said, in whom we have our redemption through his blood, which means the forgiveness of our sins. See, your sins are forgiven. Past, present, and future. Well, well, then, then if, if if my sins are forgiven, Pastor Mike, why 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 is it important that I repent if if I've done wrong? Why should I repent if I've done wrong? Because you need to repent and get the consequences of that sin off of your life. You've been forgiven. See, that's why when you repent, you can't repent and get forgiveness of something that hadn't already been taken care of. See, Jesus took care of every sin you'll ever commit, but repentance is to get yourself back on track in tune with what God has said about you. That's what repentance really means. To turn around, come back up on the level that God has you instead of operating down here on this carnal level. Amen. Amen. So, listen, when, when you got born again, you became a new, a perfect, awesome, creation. 
regardless of how crazy you act, how stupid you talk. And the only reason you still act that way is you don't believe it, and so it hasn't transferred into your behavior yet. My, my, my. Moving right along. You're righteous right now. You're as righteous as you will ever be. Amen. Tricia knows it. And you're not righteous when you do right. Just because you do right. Now you should do right. You were made righteous the moment you got born again. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. That's when you became righteous. And you're holy. Oh, I don't know, Pastor. Yeah, you're holy right now. You are holy. You're not, you're not trying to get holy. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter 2, 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. That's you. A holy people. That's what that word nation means. A peculiar people. That you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. See, he's calling you to live on the light line. Live in that area of holiness. You're holy, but you need to live in the area that he has prepared for you. A lot of Christians haven't decided to live on that level. They're down here, walking around in the mire, when he's called you to his marvelous light, to walk up there with him. You already declared holy. You don't have to do anything to get up there and walk with him. You're born again. You're qualified. All you have to do is decide to do it. Amen. Amen. And as I read earlier, Colossians 1.12 says that you are God's holy people. You're as holy as you can possibly be right now. You're not going to be holy. You can serve God and come to church every day and pray every day and read the word every day and confess every day. But, you know, 30 years from now, you're not going to be any more holy then than you are right now. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. I know this is radical. You're as holy as you can possibly be right now. You're not working on being holy. No, you're there. You're holy right now. You're righteous right now. You're redeemed right now. 1 John 4, 17 tells us love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. Well, is Jesus holy? Yes. Then so are you. Is Jesus righteous? Yes. Then so are you. Is Jesus redeemed? Yes. So are you. As he is now, so are you in the earth. And it says that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Just what does that mean? I hear Christians often, unfortunately, often say, oh, you know, I dread that day of judgment. I hope I, I, hope I get in the right line. No, see, it says we have, you know why we have boldness in the day of judgment? Because the only judgment you're going to be judged by are the crowns that you get for the good things that you did in the earth. You're going to receive crowns, you're going to receive rewards. But your judgment as far as whether you make heaven or not, or whether you're righteous or not, or whether you're holy or not, or whether you've been redeemed or not, that has already been judged by Jesus at the cross. He took your old nastiness and you've been declared righteous, holy, and redeemed. So you don't have to fear judgment. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. See, some people, you know, they're sitting there kind of quiet, but they just got set free. So, whoo, boy, I thought I was in trouble. No, you're not in trouble. Now, you need to act right, but you're not in trouble. Amen. Let's talk about a little bit more of this. But now, you you got to know that I'm talking about the real you. The one on in the inside of you. That when you do this stuff you're not supposed to do, it's going, ah, 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 ah. you remember that guy? That's the guy we're talking about right there. The one that says, don't do that. That's the guy. See, you hadn't started listening to him yet. Amen. It gets you in trouble, doesn't it? No, let me correct that. It gets us in trouble, doesn't it? <laughs> well, Pastor, how do I look now that I'm saved? Well, in the natural, in the physical, you can go look in the mirror on the wall. That's how you look when you got saved. When you got saved on Saturday night and you looked at yourself on Sunday morning, did you look the same? Yeah, well, yeah, you did. You look just the same. Nothing changed there. But in your spirit, 
You look in the mirror of the word. You look in this book. And that's how you are now. That's how you find out how you are now. That's how you find out you're holy. That's how you find out you're righteous. That's how you find out you're redeemed. That's how you find out that you're blessed. Amen. That's how you find out that healing is yours. You look in the book and you see how you are in the book. Your spirit looks just exactly like the word. Are you getting this? Looks exactly like the word. And that's the only way you're going to know. You've got to look in the book. The book tells you how you are. When you look in the word at the fruit of the spirit. And what Paul and others said in the word. That's you. The fruit of the spirit. That's you. That's the real you. All that's in you. Amen. And some of you is in there in seed form. <laughs> it hasn't sprouted yet. But it's in there. Amen. Yes. That's why often you need to look in the word. To see what you look like. Instead of paying attention to what people say about you. And what your old unrenewed mind says about you. Amen. You'll get under condemnation real quick if you go by that. No, you need to look in the word. That's why you need to read your Bible every day. Read in there. Uh, re read under that new covenant and find out. Read the letters and find out what, what the letters say about you. What you have and who you are. Whose you are. And the power and authority that's been given to you as a believer. That's what you need to look at. And no, this isn't heresy. It's believing the word. That's what we're talking about this morning. And we don't hear this part nearly enough. And you know why we don't hear it in, in the body of Christ nearly enough? Because most preachers don't believe it. They're still in some garbage that's been created in the, theological school out of that old covenant See, a lot of theology, and, and it's, it's okay to go to Bible school if you go to the right one, but most Bible schools, they teach the new covenant out of old covenant concepts, and then they send them out to preach that to the congregations, and you have defeated congregations, just people that, you know, like in some churches, they come to the altar every Sunday and get saved all over again, all over again. I had a friend that was in a certain denomination, and and, and I asked him, I said, uh, when did you get saved? He said, well, I've been saved about 2,000 times. <laughs> he said, that's how many times I've been going to church. I go up there and get saved every time. I just want to make sure that I'm going to heaven. I, I don't want to take it for granted. I want to make sure. Well, you can take it for granted. You can take it that salvation and redemption has been granted to you through Christ Jesus. Amen. We need to hear this. Let's verify some more. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 24 says, and that you put on the new man. See, that's who we're talking about, the new man. That spirit man within you, born again, new creation. That you put on the new man which was created according to God. In other words, he's saying there, that new man is just like God. You're in the image of God. The very nature of God is in you. In true righteousness and holiness. Let me read the whole thing again. And that you put on the new man. Now put your hands here and say, that's, that's the, real me, the real me. Which was created according to God, just like God. In true righteousness and holiness. So when you were born again, you were a new creation. And you became righteous and you became holy. Amen. All part of the redemption package. The, the Amplified says, created in God's image, God-like in true righteousness and holiness. Glory to God. In Colossians 1.28, let's go on some more. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ. Amen. See, it's not just enough that you be perfect. You need to begin now to display the perfection. We, we, we need to display the holiness. We need to display the redemption. I'm going to talk about that right at the very end. The Amplified says in that Colossians 128 that uh, you presented every man perfect. That word perfect there means mature, full grown, fully initiated, complete and perfect in Christ. Amen. I know this is radical. This is radical to a lot of people. So I'm trying to get you to focus on who you are. 
Because that's the key to who you can be and what you can be. Amen. And you may be sitting there stuttering and, and, and it's a, but, 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 yeah, but, but, but what about the sin, Pastor Mike? What about what I did yesterday? No, just listen to what I'm saying. Stay with me. You got, see, if you get this, if you get what we're talking about this morning, you'll quit all that other stuff. See, that's what this is about. You'll quit the cussing. See, I know Christians still cuss. And, and then, you know, and then the devil say, see there, you're not born again, you just cussed. Now, this is a radical statement. Your cussing doesn't have anything to do about whether you're born again. Should you cuss? No. You ought to be better than that. But there's a reason why you still cuss and you've been born again. You mean I can cuss and go to heaven? <laughs> yeah. But you keep that up and you're going to live like hell here. See, he wants you to live here like it is in heaven. He wants it in the earth like it is in heaven. And what I'm trying to do is to get you to know you have heaven in you and if you want to live heaven, then you need to act here like you're going to act in heaven. Amen. 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 But as far as God is concerned, everything's the same. Yes. See, when you get what we're talking about this morning, you'll quit the fornicating. The walking around condemned and, and condemning and judging people. Let's get a little bit more radical, okay? 1 John 5.18 says, We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. Well, there are a lot of Christians that just walked away from the faith when they read that scripture. So, well, I've had it. And I've had one, one particular person that comes to mind. He got over that, thank goodness. I asked him, I said, why don't you go to church? I know you're born again and filled with the Holy Ghost. I know that. Why don't you go to church? He said, because I'm not a hypocrite. I said, okay. So why do you say that? He said, well, because I continue to sin and I, you know, I can't help it. I, I try to get over it and everything. But he said, I ain't going to go to church and have him sin on Saturday night and get up and go to church on Sunday morning. And the devil says, amen. I agree with that. I don't think you should, you old hypocrite you. Well, if that's true, none of us could come on Sunday morning. <laughs> Moving right along. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. Now, the Amplified says, Jesus carefully watches over us and protects us. Christ's divine presence within us preserves us against the evil. See, he protects your spirit man. I'm talking about the real you. Your spirit man does not sin. Once you've been born again, your spirit man doesn't sin. I'm trying to get you to accept your true identity. See, once you accept your true identity, all this other stuff is going to make so much sense to you, and you're not going to fall for a lot of this stuff that's out there trying to pull you down. That's what we're after here. Hebrews 12, 23. Let's look at another scripture. To the general assembly, so that's us, and the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you ever been to a conference? Anybody ever been to a conference that you had to register for before you went so they could know about the seating and the, and the venue and everything? And it's 10 days till the conference. And somebody says, uh, are, are, are you going, are you going to be in that conference? And now you've registered and what are you going to say? Yes, yes. But see, you're not there yet. Why are you so confident that you're going to be let in the door? Cause you're registered. Your name is on the roll. Ha uh -huh. Hebrews 12, 23 says, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect. He didn't say to the bodies. He didn't say to the mind. He said to the spirits. Amen. 
He's talking about the real you. <coughs> See, your spirit is flawless. Your spirit is perfect. It's made in the image of God. It's the only place in your three-part being that God can live. But he does live there. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So this, what you're hearing this morning, this is right believing. This is right believing. See, many can't believe right because they hadn't been taught right. It's amazing that people in church hadn't been taught this. They call it heresy. But we're, are, are we reading scriptures? Are we confirming this with scripture? I didn't make the scriptures up. I just got them out of my Bible. Let's look at another one. Hebrews 1.13. I mean, excuse me. Ephesians 1.13. Ephesians 1.13. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth. See, I heard the word of salvation, then I accepted Jesus. And then I became in him. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You were sealed. Good can't get out. Bad can't get in. Your spirit was sealed at the moment you accepted Jesus Christ. Bad can't get in your spirit. We just read Jesus protects that. He surrounds that. Bad can't get in there. And bad uh, and good can't get out. So you don't drain. When you're born again, you stay just as righteous today as you did when you went through five days of sinning. Quietness Presbyterian Church, isn't it? I didn't say you should sin. I said, even though you did, you're still righteous. Because we're talking about the real you right now. You're sealed. That word sealed means guaranteed to be blessed with every spiritual blessing that pertains to life and godliness is defined in 2 Peter 1, verses 2, 3, and 4. You've been sealed. You're sealed. I call it uptight and out of sight. You're sealed. It's there. You're guaranteed. Amen. What was the title? Definitely heaven bound. It's amazing the Christians that I'll I'll ask them, you know, when I witness, uh, are you saved? Yeah. Are you going to heaven? Well, I hope so. Why do they say that? Why do you say that? Because they're judging whether or not they're going to go to heaven by their behavior instead of their being. What God has said about them. Very real stuff. See, when you, if you were to pass away right now, and I know some of, probably somebody in here has done something, has sinned, and you hadn't taken time to repent of it yet. You mean if I if I don't repent of it, I'm not going to heaven? No, 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 no. No, you're going to go. You're going to go. You don't have to dust yourself off before you enter heaven's gates. Got to get all that stuff off of you. You don't got to do this. You don't got to do that. You'll be received right in there. Amen. Because God's looking at the real you. Amen. Listen. If you're born again. I see the hands of born again people in here. If you're born again, you're heaven bound. Nothing can stop it. Only thing that can keep you out of heaven is not professing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's the only thing that will get your name out of the book. The only thing. Pastor, you're giving us a license to sin. No, I'm not. I'm not finished yet. Listen. Now you're super spiritual. Did you know that? You're super spiritual. And uh, the, the ones of you that are super spiritual don't get ahead of me now. If you're sitting there calculating how you're going to prove everything I said that I'm just giving people a license to sin. Just hang in there with me. You holy, holy ones. We'll get there. Because you're thinking, but pastor, what about the sin? What, I, I've, been said, I've been told this about the sin and this about the sin. And isn't, isn't it true that those that do these things will not inherit the kingdom of heaven? 
Yes, and I don't have time to teach on that, but I will make this statement. The kingdom of heaven is in here, in your heart. The things that do, the people that do these carnal, sinful things in the earth, you're not going to inherit the blessings of the kingdom here in the earth. See, let let me just get real with you. You're born again, but you don't tithe. Well, you're going to live in lack. Because see, part of the kingdom of heaven is prosperity. But the qualifications for the kingdom of heaven is to do what the kingdom of heaven instructs us to do. If you don't tithe, you're still going to go to heaven. But you're going to live in lack here. If you don't believe in healing, you're still going to go to heaven. See, that's part of the kingdom of heaven. And that's available for you too here. But if you, if you don't believe in healing, then you won't receive it here. Amen. You won't receive the benefits of the kingdom here if you don't believe in it. A lot of Christians die of sickness because they don't believe in it. And there are, there are all kind of other things. But that's, that's a little bit about what that means. We don't have time to get into that in depth right here. <clears throat> Let's look at another one. 1 John 3, 9. Whoever has been born of God. Say with me, born of God. Born of God. Whoever has been born of God. Now this is what we're talking about right here. The ones that have been born of God. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. Who's it talking about? Your spirit. Come on, guys, get with me. It's talking about your spirit. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he's been born of God. So what part of you was born of God? Your spirit. Was your soul? Or your mind? Was your body? Nope. Your spirit won't sin. It can't. 1 Peter 1.23 says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So he says, Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him. What kind of seed? Incorruptible seed. Amen. Are you with me? So your spirit cannot sin. Yeah, pastor, but, 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 but I'm sinning. Okay, keep listening. You haven't got it yet. Keep listening. So does that mean I'm not born again? No. Stay with me just a little bit longer. Hang in there a little bit longer. Turn to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. See, if be honest with me. How many of you kind of had a struggle getting here today? Anybody besides us? <laughs> yeah. Well, this is why. The devil doesn't want you knowing all this. And the rest of you, repent for lying because just about everybody in here had a hard time getting here. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 12. And that's why the devil doesn't want you hearing this stuff. He knows when you come here, you're going to hear stuff that you don't hear a lot of other places. I'm believing a lot of other places will start preaching it. It's that time. Mm-hmm. Hebrews 9 and 12 says, Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Hallelujah. Your redemption is in eternal. And when you accepted that sacrifice of blood, then you became eternal. Eternally alive. The Amplified says, but his own blood, having found and secured a complete redemption, an everlasting release for us. Now, having been an old insurance man, that word release just kind of jumps out at me. Because when we would have a claim, somebody would have an accident, they would be injured. They would have medical bills and maybe it was our insurance fault. So we would have to settle that claim with them. And their claim has a certain value. So we would negotiate and there would be a, a certain amount of money that would be agreed upon for them to settle their claim, settle their case, for it to be forever over. And 
we call that a full release of all claims. So our insured at that point, when those people signed that release, when they signed that, they could never again come against our insured and claim anything against him. He's forever released. Forever and ever and ever. When they sign that release of all claims, he is free. They can never come back on him again. Ten years down the road, something happens. And, well, that's caused that car accident, and I'm going back at No, you signed a full release. He's released forever. Amen. Well, you've been released forever. Jesus obtained an everlasting release for you. The devil can't claim anything on you anymore at all. No past sins, no past shortcomings, nothing at all. Amen. You've been released and you've been sealed by the Holy Ghost. Are you ready? 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, therefore in the NIV, I like the NIV, it says, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come the old has gone, the new is here. Say with me, the old has gone, the new is here. Say it again, the old has gone, the new is here. Amen. So let's talk about the new you. Say, I'm delivered from the old into the new. I have no more association with the old. The but pastor what, what, what about the sin you know like last night what, what about the sin because you just had me say I have no more association with the old but last night I sinned isn't that part of the old man yeah it is it is I know I'm saved you might say but see Here's the problem. What you did last night is trying to redefine who you are today. God's talking about the perfection of the new man. Amen. Your spirit is new, it's fresh, it's perfect, it's awesome. Well, I thought only God was awesome. Well, uh, God's in you, so you're awesome. Amen. See, let me put it this way. You have a new root. You're of a new tree. And a different tree has different roots. Amen? Jesus has delivered you from the authority and the dominion of the old root. Does that make sense? The old man, which was crucified with Christ. Romans chapter 6. Uh, well, you know, I wasn't going to read that. I was just going to refer to it, but we got time to read it. Turn to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. <clears throat> In fact, we'll start with verse 5. For if we have been united in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, see the stuff you need to know, that our old man was crucified with him. Shout out with me about as loud as you can. The old man's dead. The old man's dead. So you need to leave him in the grave. <laughs> that the body of sin may be done away with. Now that the body of sin, you English majors, what, what word is sin? It's a noun, isn't it? The body of sin. The old man, that's a noun, isn't it? So God, when he says that uh, when you're born of God, you do not sin, he's talking about that that old man, which is a noun, uh, that body of sin, that's a noun, has been done away. But yet what you're trying to mix up with it is sinning. But I sin. What, what, is, what is the word sinned? It's a verb, isn't it? So you're mixing nouns and verbs. 
talking about two totally different things. And he said, the noun has been done away with. And the sin is something you've got to do something about. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll get back there in just a minute. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves of sin. Or you should no longer be entrapped to practice sin. Or to be sinning. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Have you ever seen anybody in the funeral home in the casket get up and sin? You won't either. You know why? They're dead. They're finished. They're done. They're in the box. Well, see, when you receive Jesus, that old man, that old nature, it's in the box. Leave it in the box. For, <laughs> for he who has died has been freed from sin. Amen. And I'll just read verse 8. Now, if we died with Christ, say we did. We, did. we believe that we also shall live with him. Amen? For he who has died has now been freed from sin. That old man. That's what that word sin means. That old man. And we've, we've read it as being freed from sinning. But your old man, your spirit man, is perfect. It doesn't sin. It can't sin. It's eternally sealed. With the blood of Jesus. Unto righteousness and redemption. And holiness and sanctification. Amen. See. We're a new tree now. New roots. The old man are the sin roots. The new man. Righteous roots. See the difference? So pastor how come we still sin him? The verb. Why? Why? Why are we still producing the old fruit if we're of a new tree? Well, when you got born again, your spirit was recreated completely new in every way. But your body, your soul, which is made up of your mind, your will, your intellect, your emotions, your feelings, your desires, and so forth, are still programmed with the old software. Yeah, this is a computer age. I think maybe y'all can understand this. See, your new man is the new tree with new roots. But your body and your soul, especially your soul, because your body's going to do whatever your soul says. Your body has nothing to it. All your body does is do what it so, the soul tells it to do. Your mind will tell you to go up and slap somebody and your body just go up there and slap them. It don't think anything about it. It don't think about the consequences. Your mind says get up and walk out and your body just says okay and you get up and walk out. Your body just does what your mind tells it to. Amen. But what's the problem is is your mind needs to be doing what your spirit tells it to. And there's the disconnect. Because when you're born again you are a new computer can we put it that way? And so, if you're still programmed with the old software, even if you're born again, you're still getting the same output. You're saved, but you're still doing those things because you've yet to change the program. Amen. So the solution is, if you want to live a life that lines up with a new you, you've got to allow the new you to give you the new program so that your soul and your body will now line up with the new you. Amen. See, it's the most important thing for a person to do is get born again. That's the most important thing. Get born again. Truly born again. But the most important thing for a born-again person to do is to reprogram his mind, renew his mind. 
See, I've seen Pastor Ann and Lisa and some of these others go to uh, Staples, somewhere like that. Computer would crash, and they'd get a new computer. And then they'd come back with a new computer, and they'd put all the old software back in that new computer, wouldn't you? She said, no. <laughs> Why not? It won't operate with the new computer. It's not compatible with the new. See, sinning is not compatible with the new you. That's why you feel bad when you sin. But you still sin because you're still operating under the old program. Amen. You've got to reprogram. You've got to get some new software. And the new software is in the book. See, the new software comes with the redemption. The book comes with it. You get, see, when we get people born again, first thing we do is give them a Bible. Amen. Why? Because now you're a new computer. You gotta have the software to put in there. So you hope that when somebody gets born again, they'll read the book and get reprogrammed. Yes, amen. Amen. So let, let me just look at this. We'll, we'll, this will be the last scripture that we'll use. Anybody get anything out of this this morning? Yes. I think this will just help everybody. Romans chapter 12 in the Amplified Bible says, I appeal to you therefore, verse 1, brethren, and I beg of you in view of all the mercies of God to make a decisive dedication of your bodies. You get that? Your bodies. Presenting all your members and faculties, your mind, a living sacrifice, wholly devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. What he said in modern vernacular is, get the old out of your mind and your body, put the new in, and let, let your new computer have something to work with. He said, don't be conformed to this world. Don't keep the old software. This age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs or software, I can say in this teaching. But be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by the entire removal of the old software and the introduction of the new software that is compatible with the new you. Be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals, its new attitude, its new programs, its new software. Everything is new. So that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. Amen. So that's what we have to do. We have to get some new software in there. You need to not just read your Bible. You need to meditate on it. You need to get this stuff inside of you. Amen. You need to change. Kick out the old software. Because see, here's the thing about it. You, you try to live... I'll just put, because just about everybody has to deal with this, cussing. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> and you get condemned because you'll say something and all of a sudden something will happen and <laughs> it comes out. And you go, whoo. Sometimes you think, where'd that come from? <laughs> it's kind of like the old guy that he was going hunting went deep in the woods and it wasn't deer season but he shot this deer he saw this deer he shot it so he cleaned it and he flopped it on his shoulders and he's walking out with this deer on his shoulder and the uh, game warden steps out and says what you got there and the guy goes ah! like he didn't know what it was <laughs> he knew what it was amen he just didn't pay attention to the rules well you still got a root in there that you need to cut loose. 
You're still trying to operate holy, which you are. You're still trying to operate righteous, which you are. You're still trying to operate redeemed, which you are. But you're trying to do it with the old software. And I think everybody knows that won't work. Amen. It just won't work. And if you did get the software to come up somehow in that new computer, it's, it won't go through the process. It'll throw stuff out. It might even tear up your hard drive if it worked in a certain way. I don't know everything about computers, but I've, I've seen new computers go down, blow up. Because, well, we can still use this old software. We don't, I think it's still compatible. So I said, well, no, it's not compatible. Well, I don't know. Maybe it is. You put it in there and, you know, the thing quits. Then you want to go and, and, and use your warranty to get another one. And they know good, they know good and well what you did. Amen. And you go to God and say, God, I don't know why I do this. Yeah, you do. He knows why you do it. And you know why you do it. Amen. Well, what I want to tell you this morning is there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. You're going to heaven. Yeah, you need to clean up some things in your life. This is the year of purging our lives so that the outpouring, the great outpouring of Holy Ghost power can operate in you because God's got a year ready for you coming in 2019 that is going to require that outpouring unhindered to be able to work through you so he can bless you like you've never been blessed before. But he wants to start the blessing right now. Amen. So the sooner you reprogram, the sooner, I mean, some of them, I've seen people say, well, you know, I'm not going to throw that old software away because I might be able to use it. Throw it in the garbage. You're not going to use it anymore. Some of you need to clean out your desk at work, get rid of the old stuff. Amen. You get a new computer, start new. It's better. Amen. It works better. It works faster. Amen. Yes. So if you would stand with me. And we're going to do some Holy Ghost purging right now. We're going to clean your computer and we're going to introduce the new software, get the cap compatibility perfect for you right now so that when you leave here, you can you can get your instruction book and start reprogramming. Amen? Say, so Father in heaven, I come before you and I boldly declare that I'm a born again believer filled with the Holy Ghost, sanctified, heaven bound. I know it with all my heart. Heaven is my home. But right now, Lord, I put down Anything that I've said, anything that I've thought, anything that I've done prior to this breathing moment that did not agree with the new program, I put it aside, I reject it, I condemn it, I throw it out in the name of Jesus, and I open myself up for reprogramming for new software that agrees with your word, my instruction book, and I boldly declare from this moment on, I will operate with proficiency like you have said. And I believe I receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now give the Lord a shout. You know that little thing in there where you, uh, from every once in a while you put this little thing in there and it just cleans out all the junk, all the old history and all the stuff that's been holding back the speed of your computer. You just got clean. You're now clean, you're fresh, you're ready to go, you're operating at full speed. Don't blow it. What, what, what if I do? Repent. Say, Lord, I am sorry that I'm still thinking, doing, and speaking the way that old man did. And I, I, I turn around and I declare that I'm going to speak, think, and do the way you want me to. And for that, I give you thanksgiving that I am forgiven. Amen. Then pick it up, go on, leave the condemnation behind. Amen.